more than 150 years ago when the British were still ruling India, one of the things that they found about the Andaman and Nicobar Islands was that it was very rich in wood. So they would go there, chop off all the wood from the trees and they would sell them to many parts of the world and become really rich. But they wondered, how do we bring all these logs of wood from deep inside the forest to our factories? There were no vehicles that could pass through those dense forests. So the British chanced upon a brilliant idea. Why don't we go to mainland India, grab a bunch of elephants, put them on ships and take them to Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now up until then, there were no elephants in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So they used to get as many elephants as they could mainly from uh, Kolkata, which is from the state of Bengal, and from the state of Mysore. These two states uh, supplied a lot of the elephants. They were put on ships and they would be tied tightly. And I think some of the elephants did not even survive the sea crossing on big ships. The ones that did survive were brought on to Andaman. And they would come to Port Blair, which was the, the main island then. So there would be forests in tiny little, little islands near Port Blair also, right? Where the elephants would have to be taken to. But unfortunately, the ocean was not deep enough between Port Blair and the other islands. So the ships could not go. Only smaller boats could go. Now imagine what would happen if you put an elephant on a small boat. <laughs> Something really bad. The elephant and the humans would fall down into sea. Yep. The boat was Which is found. a really bad idea. Yeah. So guess what the British did? Did they make the elephants swim? Yes, they did. How did you guess that? Elephants can swim. Yeah! Elephants, I think, have a natural ability to swim, but they are not norm natural swimmers in the ocean. Yes. But they made those elephants swim. So the ones that survived reached the other island, others, the ones that didn't, didn't. They were the first swimming elephants, apparently, that, you know, came into existence in the world. Uh, at least we're talking about swimming in oceans. Elephants might still like to take a dip in the freshwater rivers, but salty oceans is not something most elephants like. So with these elephants, they had no choice. They had to swim and they were taken to the other islands. And anyway, these elephants were used in factories after the British left India. Now, after that, there were other people who bought the factories, you know, Indians who bought the factories that were owned by the British and they started running it. But at some point, they all decided that, you know, we couldn't put these elephants to this kind of use, partly because it was cruel and whatnot. But what to do with all the elephants now? So there were many people from mainland India who decided to buy the elephants, put them on a ship and again take them back. This also was not always a very successful story because not all elephants easily survive a, a sea crossing. The story I'm about to say is about one elephant called Rajan. He was the last swimming elephant in the world. You know, at the time when all these elephants were brought to chop logs and made to go from one island to another by swimming, he was the last elephant who was trained to swim in the oceans. His name is Rajan. Whoever was his owner was also trying to sell him. But a resort in the Havelock Island, which is where Rajan was living, a resort called Barefoot, they decided that they didn't want to subject this Rajan once more to the trauma of being taken away somewhere. They wanted... Rajan to have a good life. He spent a large part of his life already swimming, cutting, dragging and all of that. So they said, we'll pay the money for taking care of Rajan and they bought Rajan out. Rajan had a wonderful Mahut called Nazrul. He took such great care of Rajan and whenever Rajan wanted to go for a swim in the ocean, Nazrul would swim next to Rajan in the ocean. <laughs> they would play together. And the elephant Rajan died very recently, just less than 10 years ago in Andaman. 
it, there are some very beautiful pictures of Rajan swimming in the ocean and then divers going deep into the ocean and you can <laughs> see that they are at the same level as say Rajan's feet or sometimes Rajan's belly. It's beautiful. So unlike lions and tigers, which are tad more difficult for you to domesticate, elephants have been domesticated for many, many years. But despite that, elephant conservation is still a reasonably good success story. Not the most spectacular success story, but a reasonably good success story today because the entire world has less than 50,000 wild elephants, out of which almost 30,000 of them are in India alone. My. That's lovely, right? More than 60% of the world's wild elephants are in India alone. China, which is a much, much bigger country, has just 250 elephants left. This is an episode about Project Elephant. This is an episode in the in a podcast series on India's wildlife conservation journey. You're listening to What's New Today, a kids and families podcast. And this is Sangeeta, the host of this podcast channel. And joining me in this episode is... Hello, my name is Chandrake Kajabi. I am nine and a half years old and I study in Sishukriha School, Bangalore. Welcome once again, Chandrika. How fond are you of elephants? Oh, elephants are also one of my favorite animals. They're always so fun. Fun? Where have you met them? Once when I was very small, something like uh, two to three years old, we went to Kerala and uh, there we saw elephants. They, mm. We were like allowed to touch them. They started patting me. Oh, on the head? Wonderful. Was this in a forest or was this in a temple? I don't remember. It was long ago. <laughs> yeah, you're nine and a half. This happened like when you were two or three. It's too long ago. Sorry, yes. I asked you that question. Yeah, because Kerala is famed for uh, both its elephants in temples as well as the elephants in national parks like the Silent Valley National Park. You know what? Even some of my earliest memories of elephants are, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, with the elephants in temples. Because uh, in India, for a lot of the children, right, we, our parents give us a little bit of money and we'll go and leave the money in the, you know, the trunk of the elephant. And then the elephant would take that money, give it to its mahout, and <laughs> then it would come and tap you on the head like it's a blessing. <laughs> Have you done that ever? Giving it money? Yeah. So what do we know about Project Elephant? So, Project Elephant was started so that uh, it can end the uh, conflict between elephants and humans. Elephants and, hu and, elephants and humans have a big conflict because these elephants start wandering into nearby villages from national parks and then they eat all of the food, trample the grass, which is very rich. And uh, that might lead to few consequences. Phew, yeah. <laughs> Imagine I have this nice, beautiful little banana orchard and then the elephant comes and eats up all the bananas. I would be a little angry, right? If I were the <laughs> farmer. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned that farmers would get really angry if elephants came in and trample their crops and yes. they might take a revenge on the elephant, right? Yeah, they might try to kill the elephant. Yeah, which we definitely don't want to let yeah. that happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's one very big challenge. So how do you think farmers uh, can avoid a challenge like that? What he can do, he could probably keep a fence big enough to stop the elephant. Do you think a fence with a few sticks and some ropes will keep an elephant or a herd of elephants? Oh my. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not, right? <laughs> What's the next best? Hmm... He would probably keep something uh, outside which the elephants don't like and it will ward off the elephants. Like bitter good? Yeah, probably. What other vegetable do you not like that we can suggest even for the elephants? I'm not sure about tomatoes, but I don't like them. 
Oh, you don't like tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but if it were a farmer who's growing tomatoes, he can't keep all his tomato plants outside his house. Yes. Right? <laughs> that would be a disaster. <laughs> you have any other ideas? Probably chilies. Mm, the elephants would eat up all the chilies and then start having tears coming from their eyes and they'll <laughs> run away home. <laughs> but you're very close, very close. There's one concoction. Uh, you might have come across this concoction in the course of all the research that you were doing. That yes. some farmers can do, you know, put together this concoction and rub this concoction on their fences. Mm, tobacco. Yeah, if they mix chilies and tobacco... And uh, they just, you know, keep it on their fences, rub it on their fences. Apparently, it keeps the elephants from entering the farms. They just come, they smell and they go away. They yeah, know elephants have a very good sense of smell. They do, right? Yeah, yes. That's right. When I was doing my research, uh, I saw that uh, elephants sometimes... Uh, this is very gross, but they get urine from their eyes to st to say that to other animals that like other elephants, like females, that they like them. Oh, they start so meeting. You, do you want me to keep this in the podcast or no? Probably not. <laughs> 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 okay i'll remove it from the podcast <laughs> it's okay maybe we'll put it as a blooper on instagram yeah we might better we might <laughs> all right i don't know before i publish this episode i'll run it past you if you think it's okay we'll keep it otherwise we won't so okay. listeners, if you're listening to this, it means Chandrika is okay with <laughs> keeping this part, which she thinks is gross. <laughs> yeah. So back on the topic of elephant conservation, our population is also growing. You know, yes. people need space. We also need to ensure that our elephants have enough space. So it's going to be a very tough challenge in how yeah. we are going to ensure that we don't go into their space and they don't come into our space. Yes. We have to make more of those chili tobacco fences. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I saw this documentary about elephants. Uh, it ha it had a really nice matriarch and her uh, daughter. And uh, like uh, when they were doing the migration, sadly the the first matriarch passed away. Uh, so the daughter had to become the matriarch. And she had a baby during the migration, which is quite unusual. Oh, it's unusual, is it? They yeah. finish off having all their babies and only then start migrating. Yeah, that normally happens. Oh, wow. Very interesting. I didn't know this. And uh, the second one, Asian elephants have only one finger on their trunks, while African elephants have two. So these fingers are not actually like art fingers, mm. because uh, African elephants have to grasp more things. They have two fingers, which help, to help them grip more. And the Asian elephants have only one. Maybe the grass that grows here or the plants that grow here, they come off more easily. Yes. And in Africa, it requires a little extra effort and therefore those yes. trunks have something extra. Wonderful. Grassland grass is a bit tough. Hmm, I see. Okay. So, But before we end this episode, shall we do a quick quiz time? Yes. Okay. This time also, you want me to ask the questions or do you want to ask the questions? No, I think I can ask once and you can ask once. Okay, we'll make it two questions yes. based on what we've discussed. Yeah. Which Disney elephant uses its big ears to fly? Disney elephant using a big ear to fly? Hold, hold, hold. I have to think this. Ah, sorry, I don't know. What is the answer? The answer is Dumbo. Dumbo? Oh, wow. Yes. I. So what is the name of the movie is Dumbo? Yeah, the name of the movie is Dumbo. And even oh. the elephant's name. Oh. Now back to the questions based on the episode. 
Yes. Please tell me if this is true or false. Elephants were always native to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. False. False. Yes, they were brought in there on ships to help the Britishers in carrying their big logs of wood. Yes. I read this in my English book while doing a comprehension. A 3,000 kg elephant uh, exerts le less pressure than a lady wearing high heels who is 50 kg. Mm. That's a big reason why people shouldn't be wearing high heels, right? Yes, but my friends were like, what if the elephant is wearing high heels? <laughs> Brilliant, what did your teacher say to that? She started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. What lovely questions. Awesome. So, we're here hoping that Project Elephant is a much bigger success yes. and also hoping elephants never wear high heels. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you uh, soon in the next episode as part of this podcast series on India's wildlife story. I had an amazing time chatting with you, Chandrika, about uh, elephants and high heels. Yes, I loved it. Awesome. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>